I'll just start this video with these strategies. So if you want to look at them later, you can. And which example? So again, how do we set up? We set up our proofs by rewriting it out, drawing a line to separate them, and then looking at what we can do. So as far as setting this one up, some of the things that I would do before I start a proof. I look on both sides. I see what kind of functions there are. I notice none of them are squared right now. So it kind of makes me think I'm not going to use one of my Pythagorean identities. I'm also looking at this and seeing that I've got cotangent on, and tangent on one side and secant and cosecant on the other side. They're a mix of all sorts of different identities. So this would be one where I would probably go to the strategy and say, I should change everything to sine and cos and see what happens. Change everything to sine and cos and try to make each side a single fraction and see if this is one of the ones that I basically solve by doing that. So changing things to sine and cos, cotangent will be cos over sine, tangent will be sine over cos, secant is 1 over sine, and sorry, cosecant is 1 over sine, and secant is 1 over cos. So when I multiply the right-hand side together, I already have a single fraction. But when I look on the left-hand side, I have two fractions. So again, the strategy of let's get both sides to be a single fraction, you have to go back and say, well, how do I add fractions? I need common denominator. This one's missing cos, so I'll have to multiply by cos and cos. This one's missing sine, so I multiply by sine and sine. And then So now I've got a single fraction on both sides. I would now look and say, are they exactly the same? No, not quite. But being aware of the other side sometimes can tell you a hint of what you should probably change. Can you see that our denominators are the same? So we somehow need to uh, figure out a way to change our numerators. Is there a way I can change cos squared plus sine squared? Yes, because it's equal to one, and then we're done. So again, the strategy of changing to sine and cos and getting a single fraction gets us there. And the seeing the sine squared plus cos squared equals one is really easy to see in this case to figure that one out. For our second example here, Again, we'll write it out. This one should have a bit of scariness built into it because we have cotangent cubed. Is that a little bit scary? We haven't had cubes ones yet, so that should be a little bit scary. As far as looking at this one, on the one side, I have cotangent cubed. On the other side, I've got cotangent and cosecant squared. And so when I have my formulas mostly memorized, I say to myself, hey, there's a relationship between cosecant squared and cotangent squared. So before I go and change anything to sine and cos in this one, it might make more sense to think if I can change things with my Pythagorean identities. So what is cosecant squared theta equal to? What could I change it to? I could change it to cotangent squared theta plus 1. Now, the nice thing about doing that is without changing to sine and cos, now both sides of our equations have the same trig function. 
that can often be a shortcut. The reason we change things to sine and cos is so that they both sides have the same trig functions. But in this case, we were able to get both sides to have the same trig functions by changing them all to cotangent. So that's part of when I said in the strategies, being aware of what's on the other side. You see one side has cotangent, you see you can change the other side to have just cotangent. That can ha help you solve this a lot quicker. Now what can I do in this case? Well, I could distribute my cotangent. Ooh, this is looking good because I've got a cotangent cubed. Cotangent times one is plus cotangent, minus cotangent. Oh, isn't that nice? We are done. And it's about four pages less work than if you had changed it to sine and cos. This one isn't pretty if you change things to sine and cos. It might take you a very long time to do. So our left side is equal to our right side. Okay, so those are our first two. I'm just going to give a list of some of the proofs. Three, five, six, I, I. 7ii and 9ii. 